Want to find out what's going on in your community? El Observador is San Jose's bilingual weekly newspaper. Go to your local newsstand and pick up your free copy today. Looking for the skills and training you need to get a new career? Call CTC, the Center for Training and Careers, and start working towards that new career today. Call CTC in San Jose. Good evening. I'm Siwapili Rose Amador, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. A lot going on in the community right now. Just went to a powwow this past weekend uh, that the American Indian Alliance put on. Great event. Um, the Mexica Aztec New Year celebration was a couple weeks ago, and that was put on by Capoli Tonoleque. Congratulations to them. Did a wonderful job. Our own uh, Kwasiwat from Native Voice TV was uh, had a lot to do with putting that on, along with Mitla Pili and a lot of hard, hard-working uh, members of the group. And I brought some pictures that Sipatsing David Romero took of Native Voice TV. He's our great photographer and also is the DJ for Indian Time that uh, airs on the second and fourth Sunday on 91.1 KKUP from 1 to 3 p.m. So you ought to tune in to his show as well. But let's take a look at those photos from the Mexica New Year. Yes. It was a great event. It was held at San Jose High this year. It was a little bit of a smaller venue, a lot more people. I think there were over uh, 750 dancers from what I heard. 78 capolis were there. And uh, it was a two-day event. So I believe next year they're going to be looking for a larger venue to accommodate people that came from all over the country. I believe it's the largest in the nation. And um, there were people from Chicago, people from uh, Mexico, people from everywhere, New Mexico. Uh, it was a wonderful event. I think I believe that's where they were burning the previous year's flag. Um, from last year's uh, ceremony. This was on Sunday where they had the drum and uh, dancers as well. Some of the, uh, there's Anasita, <laughs> some of our uh, normal event goers for the powwows and there I am. That was early in the morning. I was there at six o'clock or earlier than six, I think it was. It was sunrise, it was dark, but it was beautiful. A beautiful sunrise ceremony. We really enjoyed that. So thank you, everyone, for coming out for that event. I even, there were great vendors there. I bought this beautiful bracelet. Of course, I always have to buy something. <laughs> this was made by Robert Carrion. He's actually on Facebook. Um, if you look, look him up, he makes beautiful work. Now, you want to check that out? It's gorgeous. But he has uh, real nice uh, beadwork that he does. This is Quill. Um, and make sure you like us on Facebook. Go to Native Voice TV on Facebook and like us and you'll see pictures from the Mexica New Year. You'll see a lot of our pictures from the set here of our guests that we have on every week. But this week we want to talk about another event that's coming up in the community and that's the Peace and Dignity Journey. So I'd like to welcome Michael Duran. Welcome Michael. And Elizabeth Baron. Baron? Baron. Baron. Welcome to both of you. Um, and Michael, you work at the Indian Health Center, have mm -hmm. been there for quite a long time? Nine years. Nine years, wow, time <clears throat> flies. in 2003. Wow. And Elizabeth, you work here, Korean yes, TV. Yes, I do. Yes, I also have my own dance, Aztec dance group. And you were dancing at the Mexica ceremony, yep. I understand, mm -hmm. with all the other dancers out there. What did you think of that beautiful event? Amazing. Uh, beautiful venue, wonderful people to dance with. It was. Was good. And the weather held up. Oh, it was really nice. Yeah, they had perfect. predicted rain, and it was perfect weather. Mm -hmm. So now both of you, I know you're very involved in the community, but now you're working on another project, the Peace and Dignity Journey. Now let's get some historical perspective. Michael, how long has it been going on? Uh, the Peace and, Peace and Dignity Journey started in 1992, and it was part of the quincentennial. And uh, it actually started as part of a, a prophecy <coughs> of the condor and the eagle coming together to bring the North and the South together to create unity. And um, 
Um, I and this is the North and the South Indigenous Nations? Correct. So the run um, has started from, it goes from the tip of Alaska to, to uh, use the, from the tip of Alaska to uh, the tip of South America, and mm -hmm. they, and the both runners, uh, or both groups of runners run together and they meet somewhere in the middle of the continent, which is usually Central America. And uh, this year it's in Panama, I believe that they're going to be uh, uniting there. So, um, so again, the, the, um, the prophecy between the, the eagle and the condor, um, again, is to bring the, the indigenous peoples together as part of, um, there's a lot of different types of history that has happened throughout the 500 years, but um, you know, one of the stories is, is that uh, when the Spanish came into uh, the northern hemisphere, um, the indigenous people said to, you know, hide your books, hide your, you know, hide your knowledge, you know, hide your ceremonies, because the people were going to go into darkness for 500 years. <coughs> and so what they said is that um, in 1992, when that 500 year centennial happened, that the people emerged from the darkness into the light. And um, how you interpret the light is, you know, all open to your interpretation, mm -hmm. but um, what it usually refers to is that people gaining or regaining um, a sense of their identity, a sense of who they are, a sense of um, reclaiming, you know, that, you know, that identity and so forth. Because, you know, again, when you look at, you know, when you look at history, you know, in the, in the context of uh, contact, mm -hmm. you know, a whole indigenous population basically changed who they were. You know, you had indigenous populations in Central America, South America, and North America. Mm -hmm. But when you mixed, you know, Spanish with the with the indigenous blood, you had you came out with a totally new race, mm -hmm. and so that, in a sense, has um, that, in a sense, has created you know confusion into who people are, and uh, a whole new language. Everything has happened. Right. So, um, so with that that whole you know emerging into the light was that whole thing of re reclaiming that identity, and so that the run, um, the run. Um, Basically, you know, promotes that, you know, promotes that light, you know, and, and um, so this year it's, it's, um, it's dedicated to the water. And, you know, again, you know, when you look at, you know, the environment and pollution and so forth, mm -hmm. um, you know, droughts and all of those things, water, you know, in a sense is, um, you know, we were talking earlier, Elizabeth and I, about the body contains 70% of water and the earth contains about 70% of water. But what's even, you know, what's even, to me, you know, it's, it's really, you know, amazing is that I believe that every element that's on the earth you can find within the body, you know, so, you know, all the different things that make up the earth, you know, also make up the body. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so water in a sense is purification. When you, you know, when it rains, you know, it purifies the air, it purifies the, the earth. Um, and, um, <coughs> you know, water, when you drink it in a, in a, you know, in a ceremonial way, it purifies mm -hmm. the body. And um, oftentimes people don't understand that water has taste, you know, but, you know, people are just, you know, people drink water out of a bottle now. People, right. you know, um, you know, people just drink water. I mean, they're, you know, most of them drink some other type of substance too, you know, but water is actually really sweet, you know, and, and uh, but you don't know that unless you go without water for a little bit, you know, and um, so, that's what's going on with the piece of dignity. Now, Elizabeth, um, how many people start on each end for the piece of dignity journey? I mean, how many start up north and how many start down south? Do people turn over during the yeah, course of the run, or how does that work? There's, over the many different times that we've done it, uh, there are runners that run the entire route, and it's a relay run, so you run a little bit, mm -hmm. get into a van, um, be dropped off and then um, continue just a constant movement of runners. Um, then there are people that join the run for short periods of time, maybe a few days, a couple of weeks, um, or just 50 miles or 20 miles of running, whatever they can do, you know. So are they normally uh, received by different um, Communities, communities mm -hmm. throughout the nation then and how Usually does that go? Usually we try to involve the local tribes, mm -hmm. the lo local people um, and and respect their lands. Like, uh, 
work with them on what their, you know, their area, uh, their way of doing ceremonies mm -hmm. will come through. Um, there's some general things that we follow, but it just depends on what tribal lands we're running through. Where do they stay in, di in different communities? Do people Some, house them? Mm -hmm. or the house? Sometimes they're housed by families, depending on the area that they're in. If it's a small town, then it's a small amount of people. When we get to the Bay Area, there's you know lots of runners, so mm -hmm. we have to find bigger venues for them to stay in. So they can stay anywhere from a gymnasium to camping out in, uh -huh. out in the mountains or whatever. So. Um, when did they start, or have they started running already? Or when mm. did they start, when did they get here, and when did they get to their uh, eventual goal where they're meeting? They're starting on May 1st from Alaska, okay. and they should be in our area sometime in July. I, think, I, I believe it's sometime between the 9th and the 11th of July. And uh, as Elizabeth was mentioning, they run through each of the communities, and that run is a prayer. <coughs> so they're praying you know, as they're mm -hmm. running. Um, and as they, as they come into these communities and the communities greet them, they're usually um, gifted with something. So they run with the staff and they're praying with mm -hmm. the staff. And so the communities usually give, put something on the staff. Mm -hmm. so, that, so, that, um, so that prayer from that community or whatever it was that they offered to that run will then be taken <coughs> and you know, they would, they'll then take it and run to the next community praying with, you know, mm -hmm. you know praying with that. And so they do it on both sides. And again, they, they, they meet up in, um, at some central location and, um, and then they have a large ceremony, you know, for that. And, you know, that concept of running again has been, um, it's, it's been around for a really long time in, in indigenous communities. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, before, you know, back in the old days, they had, you know, runners from each community going out, you know, and running into the other communities. Mm -hmm. um, for various reasons, if somebody was going over there for, you know, to trade or to do whatever it was. And um, so they're actually, um, I don't know if they're actually doing it, but a lot of the roads that they're running down were, um, used to be indigenous roads before, you know, where people were trade routes and so mm -hmm. forth. And, <coughs> you know, back when I was um, at UCSC, I <coughs> excuse me, I was doing some research on, on the trade routes of, um, you know, between, um, what's now Mexico and, and, you know, Southwest United mm -hmm. States. And um, they had what they called pochtecas, which were traders. And they would, they would go from Mexico City up, you know, up into the Southwest, and then they would branch out into um, the different areas. And, you know, one of the, you know, the reason I'm thinking about this is because one of the, um, again, when you're looking at the prophecy of the North and South coming mm -hmm. together, <coughs> back in those days there was, there was, um, there was trading going on amongst, you know, uh, amongst the continent. So there's, mm -hmm. you know, again, archaeologists and all of these have found, you know, evidence of people going back and forth. And um, the, um, the macaw feather, as an example, is a good example. It's a feather that comes from the south, mm -hmm. but when you go into the southwest, the Pueblo and, and um, the Hopi and all these other Pueblo tribes use that as, um, it's a sacred feather to them. Mm -hmm. And so, you kind of think, okay, well, how did that happen? You know, and so again, you know, there was trade that was happening, you know, throughout, you know, the, the throughout the areas, and um, there's even stories on the in the north that talk about, you know, Aztec people going up there and trading, and right. so you know, again, the concept of people coming together like that isn't new. It's something that has been happening for you know for centuries, and and. Um, and so they're kind of continuing a process that has been going on for a really, really long time. So the run occurs every four years, mm -hmm. Correct. right? It's not every year, it's every four years. Right. And the San Jose community has been involved mm -hmm. for that long? Yes, we've been doing it since the, the beginning of that, in 92. And uh, each year we try to make it a little bit better for the runners coming through. Um, so you said they're coming through sometime in July, but your committee is planning it now, right? The, yeah, um, we have to fundraise. Right, okay. We're trying to raise just around $2,500 um, to provide things for the runners, such as new shoes, um, mm -hmm. 
if you're running 7,000 miles, <laughs> you're going to need some new shoes. Uh, right. I would think so. Some tires <laughs> for your van, right. you know, all the yeah. different things that need to happen. Um, we've done tune-ups for, for the vans. Um, it, it can be anything, toiletries, clothes. Um, Do you know where they will be staying when they're in this area? We're still working on it, but um, we're hoping um, some community center or place where they can have showers and and be able to sleep comfortably mm -hmm. you know um, and be able to provide dinner and food breakfast in the morning and uh, ceremony have a space for mm -hmm. ceremony whether it's dancing and drumming and, and then also some entertainment for them possibly so right. it's not all hard <laughs> work sure, <I'll> <laughs> it's a lot of relaxing <laughs> Uh, what mm -hmm. type of fundraisers are you planning? Or has you not determined that yet? Yeah. There's actually a couple of things that are coming up. Uh, one of them, the, the, the um, well actually it's yours. Uh, well the next <laughs> one we have actually coming up this weekend, not, yeah, this coming weekend, the 24th, Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2, is a fertility awareness um, workshop put on by Jenny Luna, a PhD. Um, so she's, working with women to help them understand their bodies, understand when, you know, is the time that, that they're fertile and that to have children or not, um, to be in control of them, their own body. And um, we're asking uh, a donation of 50 to $100, depending on, you know, the person, and mm -hmm. nobody would be turned away, of course, but as a, as a donation, uh, it's an all day, well, not all day, but. I'm okay. not sure if this show will air by then, <laughs> but oh, uh, maybe okay. some of the events that are coming and then, um, um, on later right. on. The next one that after that will be the um, Peace and Dignity Journey Cultural Fundraiser, and that's going to be held at the School of Arts and Culture, at, which is at the Mexican Heritage Plaza, mm -hmm. and that's on April 19th from 7 to 10.30 p.m. And there's um, the youth group from the Indian Health Center as an example, it's going to mm -hmm. be drumming. I mean, going to be dancing and then uh, drumming also. Um, there's some uh, performers. Um, uh, Luta Candelaria is going to be um, doing some spoken word. Andriana um, Garcia is going to be doing some mm -hmm. spoken word also, and there will be some other um, performers there. And what's the date of that again? April 19th from April 7 9th. to 10.30 p.m. At the Mexican Heritage Plaza on King and Ella Rock. Yeah. Correct. Right. And it's That's a $5 right. suggested donation. And of um, course, you can give more if you have it to, right. to give. <laughs> or less if there's, you know, uh -huh. it's, you know, the, the idea is to be able to bring people together. Sure, sure. To be able to, you and know. to make them aware of right. what's going on in the run, they can get involved too. So exactly. you do need people to help as far as right. uh, just bodies to help put a lot of this, the fundraisers together and to right. accommodate the, the runners. And yeah, um, we also are putting the word out for people that are interested in running whether they run the entire route, what that takes, what kind of a spiritual commitment that takes. Um, also, if a person wanted to run part of the route, that's, that's open. Um, there are already running groups going and practicing, mm -hmm. you know, getting, you need to be physically right. in shape and also <laughs> spiritually so. in, spa in shape. So um, mm -hmm. uh, we'll be having that uh, uh, runner's workshop coming up soon. I don't know the exact date yet though. How long will the run be through San Jose? Is it like San Jose to Gilroy or San Jose to Hollister? It it's runs. Um, we have a, two routes that come into the Bay Area. One goes through Oakland. The other one goes through San Francisco. Oh. And they will make it from Oakland and San Francisco to San Jose. They usually meet up and then end up at the designated spot. Oh, um, okay. And then they'll leave the next morning and run to usually Hollister, Gilroy. Uh -huh. And they stop along the way. And um, different things. I think they're stopping right. at the Indian Health Center. Yeah, the idea is to have them um, stop at the health center mm -hmm. for you know to take a small break and have something to drink, mm -hmm. <coughs> and then from there they'll run off, run out to the um, wherever they're going to be spending the night at. Oh, great! Then they'll leave in the morning down to I believe they go to the canyon over in Hollister, mm -hmm. and from there they go to Watsonville. And I'm not sure where they run out from there. So I there's a lot of ways people can help, whether they go to the fundraisers, if mm -hmm. they just want to donate directly, they could do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. If they can come and help put on some of these fundraisers or, yeah. or if they want to run, right? Right. They want to 
donate the food, shoes yeah. or whatever. Yeah, everything. that would be great. Everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have people donating massages to All the right, runners who come through. Um, there's so many different ways a person could, could a contribute. Needs. So um, yeah. just get in contact with us. Yeah, we have. We're listing your phone number, the phone, not your phone number, but the phone number of the main uh, contact person mm -hmm. for the uh, committee, mm -hmm. and also the email address. So if anybody wants to contact uh, the committee, they can uh, contact either through email or the phone number listed under both of their names. But uh, we really would encourage people to help out in any way possible and even come cheer them on when right. they're going through town because right. I remember them mm -hmm. going the back roads and you know moving the car and you know mm -hmm. just to I mean I'm not gonna run I mean I should but <laughs> I'll wave <laughs> and, <yeah. laughs> and you know do whatever I can do to help or donate water I'm sure mm -hmm. they'll need water and there's just so many things that um, people can assist with even if it's something small mm -hmm. yeah so okay so when they get to the uh, where'd you say they're going to end up Panama. In Panama. Panama. Mm -hmm. About how many people are end up there together? I mean, I'm sure a lot of people come just uh -huh. for that ceremony. Some people right. do. Have you ever done that? Have no, you I probably haven't. haven't. I don't know if Liz has. No, I haven't. I've wanted to. I just haven't That'd ever had the opportunity to do that. No. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, I have no idea how many people end up there. Um, imagining a few hundred, if there's yeah. that many here, when when the runners come through, it's a pretty big group people of there. people. Yeah. Yeah. So I know a lot of people go down there. And I can imagine they probably take the other three years to plan this. Yeah. I mean, just because it's such a, a monumental right. event to, you know, you're talking almost, what, a half year <laughs> to run. Right. I think that it's gotten easier. Uh -huh. well, yeah. we, uh, we've done it enough routine. times that we've learned the mistakes and mm -hmm. learned new ways of doing things. So um, well, good. I know it really kicks in yeah. you know, at least a year before. Right. Starts to have we start having meetings at the year before it even gets to San Jose, us personally. Right. San Jose right. group. I was just thinking of the people that plan the overall run. They have a lot of uh, planning to do as far. as, Well, I guess they they're use very the same committed. routes. Yeah. They yeah. have to be. They mm -hmm. have to be to in order to do that because they're giving up. You probably yeah. years worth of their time to do. And there are organizing. four routes mm -hmm. going. I believe four routes going through the United States. So um, you have an East Coast and Central, mm -hmm. and then uh, two Western routes. So, so there's four groups of people running. Right, they come down from wow. Alaska and into four groups, and then they meet back up again in Mexico. And so oh, it's uh, wow. so it's really not just here; it's over there. So when we're fundraising, we're fundraising for our the route that we're covering. But sometimes when they get down to South America, you know, they're still or not South America, but that we're st we need the funds to help with the whole route, mm -hmm. not just San Jose or... Sure, sure. So it's just, 